Babe, I felt trapped before. Ooh, dang. Here we go. Like, I trapped you? Yeah. Whoa. Into this? I didn't propose marriage. You proposed marriage. I know. But listening to your vows and listening to the, the things you were telling me before, and then after we got married, it wasn't the same. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay, Lord, <laughs> you're going to suffer together. What? Yeah, I've told you this before. Hello, my name is Mrs. Melanin. And I'm Belief Mel. And we're here with episode 68 of How How Married Married Are Are You? You? Mm -hmm. My name is Belief and this is Eva and we've been married nine years. We live in California and we have four kids. Relationships are scary and it's very necessary that we share all of our struggles and we ask how How married married are are you? Every Tuesday and Thursday, shawty. If you listen and you're in the wedding party, sometimes it's deep, sometimes it's lighthearted. I don't know what else to say, so let's time to get it started. Look, it's chocolate baby story time. That's where you sing. It's chocolate baby story time. Okay, 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 and. It's chocolate baby story time. I feel like it's been a long time since we did this. Cause we were out of town. We edited. It. I mean, we recorded episodes before. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, you guys. Um. So it's chocolate baby story time. Yeah. <laughs> I have one that is really kind of sweet. So <laughs> me and Uriah, we had a moment. It was just the two of us, and I was just like, Uriah, Bo. He goes, huh? <laughs> and I said, I'm proud of you. And he goes, for what? And I said, just because. And then he goes, you should say that to Uzi and Anaya, my brother. And then I was like, this is exactly why. Why? Jeez, man. When he the is kid the is sweetest. on. When he's on, he's on. Oh, I was like, you don't get why I'm proud of you. You're just, oh, he's so awesome and so terrible at this. <laughs> I mean, when he's on, he is on. Oh, like, I love he's him. just the most like, oh, my gosh, you're a freaking genius. <laughs> but when he's off. <laughs> It is like, what were you thinking? Yeah. Man. We even had some moments like that today, but we also had that moment and it was a good moment. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that's mine. Yeah, I I really enjoy the gunfights that we have. Mm. We, uh, the kids been asking me for a long time, dad, are we going to do a gunfight? When are we going to do a gunfight? And they, they were pretty adamant about it. And I just was like, a little bit like busy and like not able to do it but on saturday we had like this all-out war and anaya is getting involved and it's just the greatest thing ever and the highlight reel is crazy if you go to my instagram belief mel b-e-l-e-a-f-m-e-l you can see like these like shots that i'm taking and i'm just you know nerf guns i mean i remember when i was a kid my dad i think he did it like once or twice but he had nerf guns and we would like play and I was just like, man, this is amazing. This is so fun. But it never really happened like that. Like, it mm-hmm. happened, like, once. I mean, and it lasts so long. Yeah, we play until. <laughs> it's like, okay. Well, I mean, think about, like, if you're in the middle of the day, you're like, man, I need to let make this time pass. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I used to do that and then make them go take a nap. You know what I mean? Or mm-hmm. just wrestle with them and make them take yeah, a nap. Yeah, because you and Uriah Bo end up with sweat like it's just crazy yeah. the way y'all sweat it <laughs> yeah theo don't be sweating like that yeah and anaya definitely not but you and raya it's like y'all are going hard yeah it's so fun i think i want to do that on saturday morning it's just saturday morning just a uh, gunfight and then friday night family night mm-hmm. yeah that's fun all right and that was chocolate baby story time where are we at what's happening right now where we are okay so i do oops i um i do want to Go back. I'm not going to play her voicemail because it's six minutes long. But um, the woman who called in about me being very selfish for the vasectomy, delaying, Mm -hmm. postponing, whatever. um, She did call in to kind of clarify what she was saying. And she spoke about how um, she wasn't necessarily calling me selfish, but she was calling my response to your desire to have a vasectomy selfish. Mm -hmm. And then she was also saying 
she also went further and so like no hard feelings there if you're listening to this episode as well um no hard feelings at all i just kind of wanted to address it for everyone because i'm sure there are a lot of you guys who are like where are you guys at with that diggling get it done or whatever and so i kind of wanted to provide an update i used it as an means to provide an update anywho she went on to ask us to kind of clarify like what what is our relationship with our audience what is our relationship with the wedding party Mm -hmm. um do we want advice or do we just exist to exist and so um i i (laughs) i don't think it's so much like what you say as much as it's how you say it I don't know because I'm sensitive Mm -hmm. and I'll admit that. Yeah. Um, And so things get to me probably more than they get to Glenn. Um, Or he just doesn't show it. I don't know what your story is. But I am open to your feedback. Like, don't attack me. You know, like if it's not constructive, I guess, don't say it. Or don't like, don't say it to me. I mean... But she didn't say anything that was mean. I know, but she was just asking. I think, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I came off because I wasn't, I knew she didn't, wasn't trying to be mean or malicious, but I wanted to. Go ahead, sorry. But I wanted to address that for myself, so. Yeah, I think that, you know, like, I, I, I'm very sensitive too. Like, people talk about my parenting. I'm a horrible father. I mean, a lot of people say I'm a great father, but then other people be like, yo, you are terrible <laughs> and you should go to jail. What? Yeah, like, you know, some people really don't believe in spanking. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And they're like, well, if you ever spanked your kid, you need to go to jail for child abuse. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Especially for people from other countries. Mm-hmm. And, you know, people be talking, you know. And sometimes it, it, it hurts because it's kind of like, man, I'm allowing you. And so the, the thing is what a, we- what a wedding party is, right? When you're not a groomsman, you're not bridesmaids. Right. Or are they are. Groomsmen yeah, and they're groomsmen. And bridesmen. So I feel like they can give advice. Yeah. And so um, one of the things like I don't know if this is true for you, but it's true for me. Like one of the reasons that I've kind of come along on this whole let's share our lives with the world thing, because I think we've shared on here before how I wasn't comfortable with it at first. But one of the reasons that I became more comfortable with it is because so many people who follow along with us were saying how um it was just nice to see (laughs) what are you laughing at (laughs) because they would say it's nice to see like a healthy black family but i think since we started the podcast people probably like they ain't so healthy (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Which, which is true like i mean like i don't know i feel like we are healthy but we still have issues like nah i mean like but health is in the void of issues yeah 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 yeah. you know yeah we gotta think of a good analogy but what i was gonna say is um one of the reasons that i came along is because people were speaking about how it was good like it was nice to kind of get an inside look at us and we often say how we're the proof not the example um where the proof that you can like have all these obstacles or all these things that you have to encounter in life and still like be a a unit and move forward push forward in these things while relying on Christ and so um anyway i guess like this podcast is just another opportunity for us to share on probably a more in depth level than the channel usually does that we aren't perfect that we have things that we're working through and that the things that we're working through are probably the same things that you're working through and so we're kind of allowing you guys to see um how we're working through it now i will say that i have gotten like some really valuable things from the wedding party heck yeah like there has been insight that i'm like yes Like there have been times when you guys are in the comment section and you communicate things that I wasn't able to put words to. And so for that, I'm like truly great. There have been times when the wedding party has listened to our conversations and they're, and I'm just not really getting what you're saying necessarily. Mm -hmm. And then they'll, they have been there, done that with their spouse and they're able to offer me 
insight to like where you're coming from. So I value the wedding party. Like, I don't want you guys to be mutes out there. However, the delivery is always, you know. Yeah, sometimes you could just be sensitive. Yeah, and sometimes I could just be sensitive. And it, like, you know, me too. Like, sometimes like someone says something to me that bothers me and I'd hop in the comment section like, well, your mama got a mustache. <laughs> you do. So immature. And your breath stinks, even when it's not morning. <laughs> like, I say all types of crap. You know what I mean? So, like, my, my thing is, like, I'm, I'll just try not to read anything negative or anything that causes me to throw myself off because I'm a very... I'm a very like emotional person and I'm overly analytical. So most of the time, if someone's like criticizing me, I've already criticized myself like four or five times for it. Um, so to go through that again by a stranger is weird. Um, but I, but I think that w what this is and, and it can be completely transparent with you. Um, this is a window. Mm. Um, this is a window. The window is closed. So if you talk, it's quite like it's probably we can't hear you but you can still see <laughs> you know what i'm saying you can still see what's going on you know what i mean and so um i you know we we are living we are we're we're figuring things out and i do i do think we are healthy because even when we argue we communicate mm -hmm. and we just try to we talk mm -hmm. if we were unhealthy it would be a wall up and we wouldn't be able to communicate or it would be friction to the point where we, you would be in despair or we would both lack hope mm -hmm. and i feel like we have been unhealthy mm -hmm. um in in a season mm -hmm. uh and not to say we won't be unhealthy again but i do think that it is it needs to be understood that we are figuring it out and this is allowing you to almost put yourself in our situation and say how would i deal in this moment uh for those of you who are unmarried um, and then who are married but haven't reached the season we're in yet. Uh, it's also a space where you can, um, you know, encourage and just be like, hey, you know, uh, this is what I think about this situation. Um, we don't want to push anybody away from that at all. Uh, I do think it's very valuable to have your input. I mean, especially some of the, the more seasoned people like be really dropping gems on me and just encouraging me uh, and you, you know, just to kind of just, you know, y'all get it. You know what I mean? And most of it is that y'all will get it. Um, but I feel like there's something that is going to happen from the fruit from this podcast may possibly become something bigger to where, you know, you you will you will want to know more about our situation in depth and how we can rephrase this in the form of a book. And this is only proof for that, you know, mm. uh, like belief in fatherhood. I get a lot of criticism all the time. Um you know, about things. Sorry, guys, I'm mosquito in here. Um, and so I really didn't know what I was doing. And I really was making mistakes and messing up. But I was showing you the raw uncut. Mm -hmm. And the reason why the raw uncut is important is so you can filter out what you like, what you don't like. But it's also important because, you know, I've already been there, done that. So mm -hmm. when I do drop the book that says, here's everything I learned about fatherhood, you would want to purchase that, mm -hmm. you know, and you would believe me. Because you know that I'm a real dad. Mm -hmm. Most of the people that we get these books from, they literally are PhDs or yeah. people we just say, oh, this is a good book. <laughs> but if you know that I've, all, I've lived it, I've lived it, mm -hmm. you know, um, then I think, you know, that is something that more value I have in mm -hmm. more of a stake that you, you're investing in. So you're investing in this with your ears and listening in your time. Um, you can also input. That's great. You know, um, but we are superhuman, not superhumans, but we are very, like super human. And That's so we thing. are very sensitive, mm -hmm. um, you know, about this very intimate moment. So if we're having to talk about a vasectomy, though it's none of your business, we're allowing we are allowing you to, you know, be a part of the conversation. Uh, so you may be able to think about it in whatever perspective or way you're in, you know. Mm -hmm. um, some people were telling me that, you know, it's against God will for me to have a vasectomy. You know what I mean? Um, other people were saying that, uh, you know, you should have been to that, you know, what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so like, I think that everybody's, you know, and you got to take everybody like I'm learning with a grain of salt. Yeah. Is. You know what I'm saying? Like, I you can't get no flavor yet. off no grain of salt. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. whatever somebody's saying to you, just go ahead and listen to it. And like, okay, cool. You know, well, good for you. You know, um, but we got to understand that we're we're really trying to figure it out. And yeah we appreciate it mm -hmm. all right let's hop into these dilemmas 
Okay, this one is titled, Did I Marry the Wrong Man? Oh, man, am I going to melt? I don't know. (laughs) Hey, Yvette and Glenn. So I think this is the first time ever writing in to someone to get advice. But here we go. I've been married to a man going on four years. And to make a long story short, I feel trapped. There have been times in our relationship where it's been just okay. But since the beginning, I've second guessed my decision to marry him. I feel like I was infatuated with him and never came out of that to see his true self until it was too late marriage. We are, we were long distance the whole relationship. He is funny and hardworking in terms of his job, but the things I need in this relationship I've asked him for, and I feel like he doesn't hear me. Such, a, such as romance, spending quality time together, respect in the way he speaks to me, and him being a responsible adult. He depends on me for everything everything is in all caps i feel like i can't let go and depend on him when i'm tired from life we tried counseling and it was helping for a while and now he doesn't want to go back because we were uncovering a lot of our problems and now he doesn't feel like he needs it i'm so tired and i feel trapped i'm wondering more and more Now, if I really married the wrong man, when I was younger, I had a boyfriend that made me his world. And lately I've been missing him and thinking if I should have married him. I'm married already, so I don't want to divorce, but I don't want to be in a loveless marriage for even another year. No marriage is perfect, but this can't be my life. I know I need to work on myself as well, but any advice on how to get out of this pit would be nice. I will say I believe he loves me, but the way he shows it is not enough for me. And I've told him that. And it seems like he is afraid of having to face what is wrong with us and actually fix it. Thanks for whatever advice you have for me. Sincerely, a, a trapped, trapped woman. woman. Oof. I would hate that feeling. I don't even. You ever felt trapped before? <sighs> no. Think about it. Say the truth. Have you ever felt trapped? No. I've always wanted to be married to you. I had, may have been severely frustrated and like annoyed with you, but you look trapped. <laughs> you always say that. You sometimes you. You don't say trapped. trapped. What do you say? You always say something. You look like you dream. Look, you look like you when you look out the window, you think about a different life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't think about a different. And I'll be watching you like. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> she's longing you're longing for something i don't be thinking about a different life i just be thinking about like you know certain liberties that i didn't take advantage of before like you know having children really yeah. just before having children yeah um, actually you know before getting married because you didn't let me travel and stuff i didn't let you travel yeah that's did you get it no i didn't glenn's in here trying to kill a bug y'all so if you hear clapping that I'm not going to edit out. Uh, yeah. So, hmm, so let's talk about it. Jeez. Yeah. Um, trap. Babe, I felt trapped before. Ooh, dang. Here we go. Talk about it. Mm. I mean, you know. Like I trapped you? Yeah. Whoa. Into this? I didn't propose marriage. You proposed marriage. I know. But listening to your vows and listening to the, the things you were telling me before and then after we got married, it wasn't the same <laughs> so i was like okay lord <laughs> you gonna suffer together what yeah i've told you this before about the sex stuff like you know like you not wanting to talk about sex or so you felt trapped because you weren't getting the sex that you thought you were gonna get mm, i felt trapped because i was unable to communicate with you in a way that would that'd be better for both of us did you feel trapped or did you feel hopeless is trapped the word or is hopeless the word i guess trapped Are they isn't the right synonyms? word i guess trapped isn't the right word i guess i know that's just rude i did not trap you at all no. i would have been fine dating you another year um yeah i guess trapped isn't the right word i'm sorry hopeless it's hopeless <laughs> <laughs> Cause that's a better word. <laughs> um, uh, but there, but there's like this, like 
And so as I think about this email, right, mm -hmm. I'm thinking about like, okay, so what was life like before you married the dude? Mm -hmm. um, you know, not that we want to go back, but I'm just curious. So she said she was infatuated and she never came out of it. But if we, if he was starting to show a lot of the things that she wanted to, sh that she needs to be shown as a woman, then I feel like this wouldn't be such a trap situation. So um, I feel like there is, there's possible hope here, but I think that there needs to be a conversation different from what she's having. So, so what, what I'm, what I'm seeing is like all her woes, right? Like mm -hmm. all the issues she's having with this situation. She's like, I'm telling him this, I'm telling him this. He's not doing it. You know what I mean? And I've been the guy that you tell me something and I'm just kind of like, you know, like that's, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. You know what I mean? Or I'm not, I don't know how to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I would definitely, instead of getting um, a counselor, I would try a mentor couple, mm -hmm. someone that he respects. Mm -hmm. Maybe um, let him choose the per person. Mm, yeah, nah, nah, you, you got to agree. Together. Yeah, you got to agree on that. Um, but I don't feel like there, there's no hope here. But at the same time, it's challenging to know that she is like playing this role and she's not getting anything fulfilled for herself. And so maybe we should. I mean, like, do you feel like she's trapped? Um. I can't say that for her. Because mm. I'm not sure that she's trapped either. Like, I feel like she might be more like you and lack hope. Because if he's not willing to get the help that he needs or that the relationship needs through therapy, because it's uncovering some things that he doesn't really want to go there yet, then it's like... That's a yeah. theory from her, though. That's why. She, that's why. She said that's why he doesn't want to go. That's not, that may, that may not be the truth, you know? I mean, it may be her truth, but it may not be his truth. Mm. Mm. You know, because, like, you ask me, like, hey, we need to go to therapy. We are jacked up and such and such and such. I was like, yeah, I ain't really got time for that. Yeah. Um, You tired? Babe, I'm always tired. I was up at 5.30 this morning. My alarm went off at 5.30 and I actually got up. I'm proud of myself. I was very confused. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, I think, I think, I don't know if she's trapped, but I do feel like she's hopeless and I do feel like there needs to be an example for this man to follow. I feel mm -hmm. like I've been this guy. In our relationship? Yeah, man. Like, you know, like not scared to spend money, not wanting to go anywhere. Um, I mean, I, I've always wanted to like improve our relationship and marriage and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Uh, but uh, you know, not being romantic. You know what I'm saying? Um, you see that that longing. That's what that looks like right there on your face. Mm -mm. You think about all the examples of that. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I just feel like she's tired and she's just kind of over it. Uh, but I, I I do feel like this is fixable. Yeah. I don't feel like there's no hope. Like, I feel when like... When you're in it, though, it feel yeah, like that. I know. I can imagine. Uh, so they were long distance the whole relationship. I'm going to just put this on me for now. Um, yeah, so basically, he's hard, he's a hardworking guy, but he's not hardworking when it comes to their relationship. It's really hard to give this woman advice because I don't know how to motivate a man to love you. Or to love you like you need to be loved. Right? Yeah, so she's saying that she believes that he loves her. It's just the way he shows it is not enough. And so So they're speaking two different languages, maybe? Mm -hmm. He's he's doing it as far as acts of service is, are, is concerned. And she needs it in a way that is, you know, more physical touch to quality time and something else. I wouldn't even say so much physical touch as, mm, I don't know. I, yeah, 
basically you guys are speaking two different love languages and you're trying to figure out how do you get him to speak more your love language and i would just say persevere in speaking his yikes nah nah no Nah, i think i think she needs to communicate like hey like i know that you're trying to love me and you're doing as best as you can through your actions at work but there's nothing else that shows your love to me and i and you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't feel your love in your communication. I don't feel your love in how you, and I'm not trying to beat you up here. Ultimately, I want us to get better. I just don't know how to tell you this. And I feel like when I'm, you know, and there's one thing, it's like, is he open to receive it? Can she explain it without breaking, like break falling apart? You know what I'm saying? Not that she's sensitive or anything like that. I'm just saying like one thing that I have been able to do with you and you've been able to do well is like, I can communicate my perspective and say, Hey, I'm not feeling this, 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 and this help. Like I don't, and I don't know what to do about it. You know what I'm saying? And you could just sit and listen, you know, that's very difficult to do, you know, like, you especially when you hear it and you really just don't know what to do with it. Yeah. But you don't get like defensive or mm -hmm. like, you know, like, what do you mean? You know what I'm saying? Like you don't do that. You mm -hmm. just listen. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think you need a you need a safe split you need a safe space to explain yourself, um, and so that that type of thing is just you know you being able to say hey like I I know you love me and I know you're trying to show it as best as you can I just can't feel it because dang you know what he's probably he's probably like a a standard male where he he goes to work he works hard. And that is his contribution. And she's like, I need, I need more. way than that. Mm -hmm. I need way more than that. And she's four years deep in and she's just tired. She's exhausted. She's probably been trying to tell him this for a while in so many different ways. They, they've been married four years? Mm -hmm. I've been married to my husband going on four years. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's a long time to be in that situation. Yeah. Um, but I do think there's I do think there's just a conversation that needs to be had in a way that he can hear it. He he he's not he can't understand you in the way you're communicating it. Um, I'm so sorry, sweetheart. I hope that we um Yeah, no, I really I really think you should take the time to explain exp my mic. Explain this um I f I feel like you need a be a safe place to ask to be very honest with him. Who's he talking now? Um, be have a safe space to be very honest with him and, and just communicate your point of view, your perspective, and just tell him like, hey, like, you know, I don't, you know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to quit. I love you. But these are all the ways that I'm not feeling loved and I need help. And you probably shouldn't tell him you're thinking about your old boyfriend. Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Make sure you don't do that. That's something you that would do. <laughs> Back in the day, not currently. Mm -hmm. Jeez. I've grown. Yeah. You've grown a lot. Thanks, babe. Um, all right, man. I mean, given the, the fact that we have Uzi, we are not going to be able to go into another scenario. So I'm just going to go ahead and ask you, babe, how married are you? Before we do that, I um this is when the wedding party does become a valuable part of our um the comment section, you know? Because when I be reading the comments on the Ask How Married Are You episodes, you guys really have some insight for these people. Like I'm like, oh, I didn't think about that. So and they might be listening to this episode and go into the comment section and be looking to see like what you guys have to say. So I definitely invite you to chime in here if you have some pointers for this young woman. If you've been there, done that. If you're currently there, what are you doing? Like, what are the things that you're trying out type thing? So, yeah. yeah. Um, go ahead. That's it. That's all I was going to say. Oh, babe, how married are you? All right. So we went out of town. This is how married I am. We went out mm. of town. You're going to talk about how you packed. How I packed? Okay, never mind. Go ahead. How I unpacked. He just unpacked and plugged your... How I unpacked as soon as I got home. Oh, what? 
As soon as I got home, usually I leave oh, sh- my suitcase. Not even upstairs, downstairs. Downstairs, halfway open. Yes. Grabbing my toothbrush. He'll be brush. grabbing stuff out of there. Ooh, I need this right now. I need that right now. <laughs> and leave the suitcase downstairs. But as soon as I got home, the next day, everything was put away. Things was empty. I was mad, but that was motivation. And I got all that stuff done. That's how married I am. Babe, how married are you? I'm so married that today when you came home from the gym... You, I don't know what was going on. You were going to make dinner, but you decided you should shower first or something. And wait a minute, I wasn't going to make dinner. My dinner was made this morning. Well, you were talking about sweet potatoes and you took sweet potatoes out of the fridge for breakfast when there was already sweet potatoes out. Mm -hmm. Never mind, I'm starting to. I always do that. Yeah, I just jab and then. <laughs> and then I just how good I am. I'm so married that I saw that he had put a empty cookie sheet in the oven. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, let me help this guy out because he's clearly not in his right mind. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just gonna make him some sweet potatoes and do it myself for him. And so I did. <laughs> you know why I do that? It was wet and I didn't dry it all, so I just put it in there to Dry to dry it off. off, yeah, and then I was gonna, and then you disappeared for thirty minutes. It was my life forty-five. Okay. <laughs> that's <what's> better. <laughs> and that. That's... Wait, 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 wait. Sorry, I keep pausing, guys. You're still not sending us in the how married are you? What this, the heck? This morning, though, um, someone did DM me, and they said, "Don't DM, me, don't DM me, though, guys. Uh, unless you're gonna send in send a voice, voice memo. memo. Tell us how married you are. Tell us how great of a husband you are tell us how great of a spouse uh wife you are yeah tell us how you're killing it as a spouse <laughs> but this one i really felt i told her i was like oh shoot i can actually like taste <laughs> okay this is what she said she goes i'm so married i let him have the last perfect pancake the one with the butter filled crispy goodness around the edges y'all know what she's talking wow. about did you just yes. did you just imagine I it? Tasted it you tasted it I don't know. Yeah, I tasted it. That's love. So good for you. I don't know if you want me to say your name, so I'm yeah, not gonna not. say your name. But yes, good for you, girl. Yep. And, and that's, that's just, just how, how married, married we are. are.